and get us shared out on Facebook. All right, well, it is six o'clock, so we will go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to our first small business training class. Uh, my name is Tracy Irby, and I am the director here at the Center for Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, we also have Donna Lisa on with us tonight. She is our program director. Uh, I believe I haven't looked to see who all is here yet. We should have Justina Shaw on here as well, our small business advisor. And really welcome and congratulations to all of you. We're so excited for you and for the group uh, of winners that we have. Just know that this was a huge grant program. We ended up with 320 grant applications. Uh, we, for some reason, decided we would uh, announce it two weeks later. <laughs> so it was a crazy busy two weeks for us. On the last day, we started with 177 in the morning. And by the time it closed at five o'clock, we had 320 applications. So that shows me how many people wait to the last minute. Uh, <laughs> so, but I'm, we're so excited for all of you and to offer um, offer this training to you. And we have also opened up this uh, programming to anyone that was interested because it has such valuable information. But tonight we really wanna celebrate all of our winners. So first we're gonna go around and um, have everyone just very quickly introduce, them, uh, introduce themselves and their business. Uh, so everybody will know who else is here and who the other winners are. Um, these, these trainings are mandatory to get the second half of your funding. Uh, we will send these out if for some reason um, you weren't able to attend and then we just need you to answer a couple questions. Uh, so we know that you've been through it, but really uh, it's best if you could um, attend in person, but we know that life happens. So let's see, let's get started. Donna Lisa, do you have anything right now? Um, I do I'm not. Doing, um, okay. So I'm gonna go by the list that I have and I may just go by um, first name. So I would, so then that way we'll make sure too that we know the um, right last name. I don't wanna um, call anyone by the wrong name. So first and that I show on our, on our winner list is Meg. Are you here, Meg? Hi, yes, I'm here. Great, so if you could just uh, tell everyone your full name and quickly you, your business name and just a very short bit about it. Oh, okay, sure. My name is Meg Renninger. I live in Fort Worth and I own Southside Plants. It is a house plant accessory that a uh, company that also has a variety of higher tech uh, house plant products. Great, thank you. Um, and then we have Renita. Hi, my name is Renita Moremi and I live in Grapevine. Um, I'm the owner of a technology startup in the blockchain space and I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you. Great, congratulations again. Um, Sarah? Hey, she may not be with us this evening. Angie. Hello, uh, my name is Angie Clues. Um, I am the founder and owner of Renewed Fresh Juices, LLC. Um, it is a cold press juicing business where I offer cold press juices along with, um, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought, along with wellness shots. 
Um, so I provide wellness shots for your immune, your immunity, for energy, and for anti-inflammatory. Great, uh, Tamara. Hi, my name is Tamara Gibson. I am the owner of TT Innovative Solutions. We're here in Houston, Texas. It is a technology consulting company. Uh, we are building a product right now to assist with uh, uh, dyslexia in adults. How exciting. Thank you. And I will, I made a note to Tamara. That's why the first time it's always difficult. <laughs> uh, Sonia. Okay, um, Maisha. Okay, Mona. Hello, I'm Mona Nalarabi. I am the founder of um, Curly. Curly is a custom curly hair product company. So we use technology to customize natural hair products. Great. Hey, um, Barka. Hi, I am the owner of Willow Montessori Academy located in Dallas, Texas. Um, we are a Montessori school that catered to six weeks to six years old. Great. And um, if you could say your first and last name, so I get it oh. straight the first time. Burka, <laughs> Burka Nike. Burka Nike. Yeah. Great. Congratulations to you. Uh, Andrea? Okay, Chantel. Hello everyone, my name is Chantel Elford. I'm based in Dallas, Texas, and I have an online language school. And so the initiative that we're working on for this project is actually transferring a lot of our platform to an, um, uh, an e-course for, for us, Spanish, and then we'll do next American Sign Language. So very uh, honored and happy to be here. Thank you. Great. Congrats to you too. Um, Kay? All right. How about a rain? Okay, Mina. Okay, Melissa. Hey there, my name is Melissa Wagner. I'm a project management professional and my partner is also on here. Her name is Hope Lloyd and she happens to be the most bubbly dental hygienist you'll ever see. And what we've done is we've come up with a company where we're trying to integrate the patient experience with keeping dental hygienists happy and healthy. And so we're trying to make the dental world a happier, healthier place for both the patient and professional. And uh, we're gonna do that through offering continuing education courses and patient coffee convos, which is basically just time where you can get together with us and we're gonna have some coffee and just have a really chill experience and maybe teach people how to take care of their, their mouth better. And that'll lead to happier patients and way happier hygienists too, so. Yay, and so now yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> say anywhere your fun business name. Oh, sorry, no, 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 I didn't. <laughs> we're called Serendipity and we just, we think that, you know, 
we are trying to get away from the stigma of having everyone think of, uh, you know, dental hygienists as mean people that are trying to hurt you and get into the fact that they're, they're really professionals that are trying to help you. <laughs> so <laughs> Exactly. But I, I, your name just tickles me. <laughs> so. Thank you. Hope, do you want to add anything? So I was going to say, my name is Hope Lloyd. Mm -hmm. And um, I am a dental hygienist and I graduated from TWU 25 years ago. So oh, wow. this is so, yeah. So I have a little bit of experience and knowledge. right? <laughs> <laughs> and I love what I do and I love my patients, obviously. And, and Melissa and I, um, we are, we are just an awesome team. So we really appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, right. We're so tickled for you and congratulations to both of you. And I was going to ask, cause I was going to say, both of you are welcome to these. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, great. I'm excited um, to be here. <laughs> yay. Thank you. Brooke. Hi everyone. I'm Francis Brooke Evans Fitzpatrick, but you can just call me Brooke for short. It's going by your middle name. So if anybody who goes by their middle name, they know my pain, but I am the founder of Mosaic Matchmaking. I am located in Dallas, Texas. So with my matchmaking company, I offer traditional matchmaking services where I'm actually hand selecting singles and putting them together. I also offer date coaching services. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to launching soon is date coaching boot camp. So it's nice to meet everyone and just thank you so much for this opportunity. Great. Congratulations. And I knew you went by Brooke. So that's why I wanted to make sure you would answer. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. I had one of those names, so I know. <laughs> okay, the next one, um, and I feel like I might butcher this name. Um, Edna. Eden, I'm sorry, Eden, Eden Elise, maybe? You're muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So to make it short, like I am from Brazil. Uh, my name is Denise, but people know me by Denise. Make it easier. So Denise Nogueira, I own a company called the Ryan's Enterprise. I am from San Antonio, Texas right now. And I have, uh, I am into the medical field. So I have developed a product for pain reliever. It's actually the only product in the world to treat tendon and suspensory ligament in a horse. Also tendon injury in people. It's like uh, one of the most amazing products in the world right now. And uh, I, I am very grateful to have this opportunity. And thank you so much for each and everyone. I, I, I have learned so much about TWC that I, and about <laughs> Tracy and everyone that worked there. I'm very excited for this. Thank you so much. I appreciate oh, you that. You bet. Congratulations. Okay. Um, Paige. Hi, I'm Paige Glumack. Um, I am the founder and owner of Dr. Glumack LLC. Um, we started our business with just uh, manufacturing natural American-made soap products, but uh, with this project, we're actually hoping to expand our product line into a couple other natural personal care um, products, including a natural bug spray and a retainer, a non-abrasive retainer scrub, and then also a holiday scent. So uh, we're super excited and thank you for the opportunity. Great. Congratulations. Uh, Carrie? Hi, uh, Carrie Meyer, Cord Westerman. I own and run Thistle Creative Reuse. We help people get creative sustainably by selling secondhand arts, crafts, and creative materials. Great, congratulations. Uh, Brittany? Let me unmute myself. I hope everyone's doing well this evening. Thank you for having me and Thank you guys for, of course, awarding my company, of course, the founder of Marnay, formerly known as Signature Tech Solutions. 
So um, we're going through a lot right now. I'm sure everybody is, but just going through a rebranding, restructuring of my business. So this grant came right on time and it's already being put in use um, because I currently offer accounting services, so taxes and bookkeeping, but expanding into um, insurance, lending, and um, advising. So got a lot going on that's going to happen before the new year. So I'm excited to learn about what's in the classes, of course, and meet with everyone, and super, super excited and thankful for the grant received. So thank you, guys, at Texas Women University. You bet. Congrats to you as thank well. You. Okay. Lynette? And I know this was fast turnaround from announcing Friday and having something on Tuesday. Um, all right, Sharonda. Hi, my name is Sharonda Scoggins. I'm in Houston, Texas. I am the owner and founder of KC Events and Florals. We're a floral event design and rental company here in Houston. Great, congratulations. Thank Maggie. Hello, I am Maggie, and this is my business partner, Meredith. We are Houston's first female-focused co-working space. Great, congratulations. Thank you. All right, Tracy. Hello, my name is Tracy Lalas Finn, um, Houston, Texas, and my company is Lith Industries. So we work with small Italian businesses that are multi-generational craftsmanship focused companies, um, particularly right now focused on chocolate and shoes. Um, and we are, um, we sell online and then we're also working with wholesale retailers, although that's been a little bit challenged with COVID. Um, and we, uh, we are looking to open a, our first retail pop-up. So we are super appreciative of this grant to help us do that. Thank you, Tracy and team there. Oh, great. Well, thank you. And Chocolate and shoes are probably two of my favorite things. <laughs> oh, great. Darcia. <clears throat> okay. She may not have been able to make it this evening. She was there this morning. This is a long day for us because we had our women rise this morning as as well so we'll go ahead and get this started again congratulations to all of you we're all so excited for you and for your businesses and as you can see it's such an interesting group of different types of businesses so again congratulations to all of you so I am going to introduce our first speaker tonight uh Lynn Hold. She is an adult programming librarian with the Fort Worth Public Library. Before making the career change to librarianship in 2018, she had spent a decade in the field of market research, helping businesses of all sizes with their outreach and advertising campaign. She is happy to recommend a good fantasy read or help you design a survey about your latest project, whatever you need. She lives in Denton with her partner, two cats, and over a hundred unfinished craft projects. Lynn, we're so happy to have you here tonight. Hi, everybody. That hundred craft projects may actually be an underestimation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's really nice to meet everybody. It's really nice to hear about everybody's uh, projects they've got going on. Um, I'm going to admit that this uh, presentation is usually aimed at people wanting to start their small business rather than people who already have their small business started. So there's a couple of things that may not entirely pertain to you, but a lot of it will, and that's the point. So we're gonna move on quickly. Um, and it's really great to be here with you guys tonight. So we're talking library resources for small businesses. You guys are all over the state, which is fabulous. Um, I'm going to make uh, extra sure to Hi. mention, oh, sorry. Somebody wanted to speak? We could make sure everybody's muted while Lynn's speaking. If you have any questions, you can put them in the chat or we'll get them when Lynn is finished. 
sorry. Okay. Um, you guys are all over the state. Um, I'm going to mention which of these are specific to Fort Worth Public Library and which of these um, you're going to find at almost any library. But I also want to emphasize that you should go talk to your local librarian and check out your own local library uh, to see what resources they have because we've all got different stuff. So moving along quickly uh, so that I'm not wasting any of you guys' time, she says, and tries to get the PowerPoint to move forward. So. You guys don't want to start start businesses. You guys have already started businesses. So that very first question does not pertain to you. You don't, you, you've already done it. The rest of this, however, um, where do you get information? If something pops up and you need to know something new that you don't already know, uh, where do you find that information? How do you connect with other entrepreneurs? Um, where do you get legal forms if something pops up that you haven't dealt with before? Um, how do you do market research? Um, how do you make prototypes? Hey, the answer is the library. Um, I'm a big advocate for the library. I may be biased. Moving on. Um, what resources do the, does the library have? Um, we have books, obviously. We're kind of known for it. Um, but we also have databases. Tonight we're talking mostly databases uh, because they're awesome. Uh, some of them are really extraordinary uh, and you'll be shocked at how much information they have. Uh, we have relationships with local organizations. Um, so we probably already have an existing relationship with several local organizations that can provide you information about starting or maintaining a small business. That also means that we can help you make connections. We have meeting space um, where you can make connections yourself. Uh, we have free Wi-Fi. That cannot be overstated. Uh, free Wi-Fi is super helpful. Uh, we have 3D printers. We have 3D printers. And a lot of libraries, that's becoming more and more popular. More libraries are getting 3D printers. Um, I think they're awesome. But most important, and I'm not at all biased, we have librarians. And I know you guys are thinking, she's a librarian. Of course she thinks librarians are important. Um, I'm going to tell you some a couple of trade secrets. Librarians don't know everything. What we know is how to find out everything. Um, so if you have a question, if you want to know where the business books are, how to research, how to use the databases, what the local organizations are, um, if you just don't know where to start or you do know where to start and just like need someone to talk to, you go to your desk and the librarians are there. I'm not going to say every librarian is super nice, but a lot of us are. Uh, we, we work with people because we love it and uh, we're here to help. And that is the ethos of our job. So ask your librarian. Um, so really quick, what are we expecting tonight? Um, what's left in this deck uh, is a bunch of mnemonics. Um, I'm about to leave PowerPoint and start showing you stuff on the internet. Um, so what's left in this deck is these links to um, pages that look kind of like this to remind you what I talked about. Um, you're going to get a power, uh, PowerPoint of this, not a PowerPoint, a PDF of this PowerPoint words. Uh, in your deck uh, afterwards. And so you're not gonna lose this information. This will help you remember what I talked about and hopefully help you find things again in the future. Then we're going to take a look at the databases in their natural habitat on the internet. Um, we're gonna talk really quickly about 3D printers because Fort Worth 3D printers are pretty special. And um, I'm gonna do a really quick way to show you, I'm gonna show you really quick how to find databases at almost every library in the state. If you're out of state, I, it'll probably work there too, but I haven't uh, worked at libraries anywhere but Texas. So we're about to hop off PowerPoint, she says. Donna Lisa, can you give me a thumbs up if we're on the, if you can see the Fort Worth Library webpage? Um, I can't right now. I'm still seeing your slide presentation. So a lot of times you have to stop sharing and then reshare again. Well, fine then. Let's try this once more with feeling. Share. Everybody saying, everybody saying the Fort Worth Public Library yes. webpage. Yes. Fabulous. Excellent. All right. So, um, at most libraries, uh, when you're using the databases from home, you have to log in with your library card number. So that's what I'm about to do. Now I'm logged in, and I don't know why Google thinks anything about me. Moving right along. We're going to hop over here to database access. Fort Worth's, Fort Worth's website is not my favorite in the world, um, but 
that's okay. We're going to keep moving. Um, most libraries are going to have their databases organized into topics. Uh, if they don't, I'm about to give you the names of a couple of really good resources uh, that you can look for specifically. Most uh, libraries will have an all databases or a databases A to Z, so you can look for them by name. We're going to hop here into business, and we're going to start with um, this one right here, LinkedIn Learning. Um, everybody knows what LinkedIn is. We all use it all the time. Yes? Yes. <clears throat> um, LinkedIn Learning through your library is not quite the same as LinkedIn Learning through your job, I think. She's, it's been a little while since I worked somewhere that offered LinkedIn learning through my job. And now, this is the problem with saving my library card number. I have to go pull it up from somewhere. Um, So LinkedIn Learning um, provides you uh, access to courses to learn things. Um, does what it says on the tip. The, one of the cool things about LinkedIn Learning is we're going to talk about, I'm so sorry. One of the best things I think about LinkedIn Learning is that if you go into one of their topics, a lot of time they have these things called learning paths. Um, learning paths are videos that are pre-curated for you. Um, there are a, a selection of videos about a topic that um, become essentially a course, a, a class. In this case, like an 11 hour class. Becoming a small business owner, you can take an 11 hour class about it. Um, LinkedIn is nice because uh, the name is recognized, it's recognized on your resume. Um, For you guys, obviously, um, I looked at the very general small business and entrepreneurship, um, which as you can see, I've looked up before. Um, for you guys, you might be more interested in say, since you've already started your business, maybe you're mostly interested in the marketing side um, and you because you're looking to um, get more, uh, more, more eyes on your business. Small business marketing, hey, guess what? There are whole courses in this too. There's one learning path. The courses are also uh, curated videos. Um, they're considered like some of the best LinkedIn learning videos. The nice thing, one of the cool things about LinkedIn learning to me is that there you can learn things that are not uh, standard business stuff. Like for instance, you know, I've obviously looked at this before. Um, anything that's considered a life skill Anything that could potentially be considered a resume or a job skill, you can find on LinkedIn Learning. Um, we're running through these things as quickly as possible because we have limited time. So I'm happy to answer questions at the end. So I'm not uh, closing anything up. The next, wow. Ah. So the next thing we want to take a look at is called the Small Business Reference Center. So LinkedIn Learning is available at Fort Worth Public Library. It's also available at a couple of other public libraries in the area. Um, uh, let's see, Denton has it, Irving has it, Dallas has it, and Plano has it. Those were the ones I could find in the area. If you're in like Houston or San Antonio, maybe uh, you'll have to check for yourself. Small Business Reference Center, on the other hand, is available at any library in the state of Texas, which makes it extremely valuable. Um, so Small Business Reference Center looks like this. It has access to um, a whole selection of books, of eBooks. Um, that's one of, the, one of its biggest uh, claims to fame is they have an extremely extensive selection of um, business books. They have nearly all of these NOLO books, uh, which are considered, um, which are considered Kind of the top in their field. Um, I know that 
one of the reasons it's available at all libraries and LinkedIn Learning isn't is because of this right here that says videos. The problem with these videos is that they are flash videos. Um, I'm giving you secrets. Uh, so they're flash videos, which means they don't work on most computers anymore. Um, so my recommendation is just skip the videos. Um, what they do have is a startup kit and business plans. So you guys don't need this, but if you decide you guys are all entrepreneurs, uh, that which means to me that this may not be the last business you ever start up. You guys um, have all done it before, so you may not need all of this information, um, but the startup kit and business plan gives you all of the steps um, and will help you if you need um, extra assistance with doing it the next time you do it. Because I have every, um, confidence that you will do it again. Um, one thing it does have is industry information by small business type. Um, now this is slightly complicated information and is not actually navigating very well. These are the small business types um, that it suggests. Um, and you can take a look at the industry reports, um, which will give you kind of an idea um, of how the industry stands. Um, the trouble with this, not all of them are quite as updated. This one's actually very good. Uh, some of these are a little out of date. Uh, this one is actually quite up to date, which is very nice. Um, the other trouble with this is that it's a It's a report that looks like this, which is not entirely intuitive to every reader. Um, but if you're interested in, um, if you're inter interested in your industry's information, this is going to give you um, really as much information as you could possibly need. Um, and if you have a lawyer who can go over this information for you, or if you have somebody who's helping you with your small business plan who can help you go over this information, anything you don't understand is going to be, um, going to be, they're going to be able to explain it to you. I anticipate you guys look at that report and are like, I've seen this before, I know what it's all about. Um, So that's the Small Business Reference Center. Uh, Gale Legal Forms. Gale Legal Forms is another one that's available everywhere. This one's really nice. It is, um, so this isn't one that you just want uh, if, you're, uh, if you're starting a small business or running a small business. This is one that might actually be useful to you in about a million uh, places in your life because these are legal forms, they're free to access. Uh, for you, if you have a library card, about just about everything you could need legal forms for. If you are setting up your will and testament, if you are um, buying real estate or selling real estate, um, all of this stuff is available here. But what they do have is a whole small business section right here. My internet is slow tonight. And in the small business section is just about everything you can think of. Um, some of this stuff, like I started looking through this myself, it's like, I had not even thought about that as a, uh, a concern. Um, so a concern for small businesses. So um, as someone who's never started a small business, I was, I feel like I've learned a lot. Um, most of these are, let's see, um, something that I actually understood. <laughs> Um, it was in accounting, she says, quietly, invoices. So one of um, these invoices, actually all of these, uh, you can download as either a rich text or, text or a Microsoft Word document. Let's see if this actually pulls up. Maybe. Um, anyway, it's not pulling up right now. Uh, because it's a Microsoft Word document, you can edit it any way you want. Um, also, I like invoices because um, it provides a good example of this. Um, in this case, there are different invoices. You can choose um, the look that works best for you. Um, 
And of course you can make the edits yourself, you can make any edits. Again, this is something that is um, available at every public library in the state. Um, and again, not just useful for small businesses, useful for just about everything in your, um, any legal need you might have in your life. Um, again, I'm going through these all really fast. If something, uh, if you have a question, please ask, uh, put it in the chat and I will answer them uh, at the end. Um, I just want to be sure I'm not uh, wasting you guys' time. So this next one is our big like banner head uh, resource. And it's the one that I want to spend the most time on, which is why I've been going through everything else so quickly. This is called Reference Solution. Some of you may have heard of it referred to as Reference USA. Um, it looks like this, uh, which doesn't, isn't, isn't especially prepossessing, I admit. But this uh, resource has it has some of the most up-to-date um, business and consumer information um, that you can get, uh, with especially without paying for it. Um, so uh, let's see, I'm going to open this up. Um, the quick search, if you're looking for a specific company, like let's say, I've obviously looked for this before because it was an example I wanted to use. If you're looking for a specific company with a specific name, that um, initial search is really useful. And it will tell you, open, it will tell you a lot of information. This V here means verified records. They actually call up companies, make sure that the phone number they have goes to the real company, that um, the information they have is accurate. They're actually calling people on the phone. Um, I just had, I just sat a webinar this afternoon where they explained all of this. And that sounds like a horrible job to me. Um, so this tells you, this is their industry profile, including their, including their legal codes, um, how much money they make. Uh, we also have the name of, sorry, he's down here. The name of their CEO, um, directors, managers, um, diversity profiles, uh, sales volumes, um, it's got a lot of information. So if you're looking for a very specific company like this, um, you can find out a lot of information about that. If, however, say you're um, looking at, we're going to go back to the search. We're gonna hop here into the advanced, advanced search. So say you're opening I don't know why my internet's acting up tonight. It's it's really great. There we go. Um, let's see. I remember somebody mentioning that they are. Um, I think I heard this. Um, doing a uh, juice bar or juice some kind of juice business. <laughs> Sorry, I get nervous before I have to speak in front of people. And so I uh, can't remember things. What am I looking for? It's in here somewhere. Oh, major industry group. This is what I'm looking for. Boy, we are tired today. Um, all right. So you're looking for, um, you're looking for your competitors, let's say. Um, you want to open a health food store here in Dallas. So you want to find out how many other health food stores there are, particularly um, if you've got like a storefront, you wanna find out the ones that are closest to you, if there are any. Or if you're planning on opening one and haven't even got a storefront yet, you wanna know where the best place to put that storefront because you'll have the fewest that, um, you have the fewest competitors, right? Um, so what you can do is, that's the wrong thing. Yep, not helpful. Um, oh, food stores, grocery stores. 
see if that's going to, aha, health and diet foods. So you want to open a health food store. You want to open it, let's say, that's not what I wanted here in, it's down here, in Texas. Let's say you want to open it here in Dallas. Well, in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. So what you can do is you can update your count right here and that'll tell you exactly how many there are. Hey, in DFW, there are only 379 health food stores. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get to this later. You can refine your search like a million different ways. And I'm gonna show you uh, who has the best information on that. <laughs> but for right now, I'm doing a really quick kind of basic search. Um, I'm leaving it with these verified businesses, the phone verified businesses, which I was just talking about a second ago. Anyway, we can take a look at our results and hey, we get a whole list of results. This is very cool. They're all over the DFW area. And even better, I can put them on a map and I can take a look at this map, this heat map, and I can see that my screen is too small is one thing I can see that, hey, there are a lot of them right here in central Dallas. There are um, actually not a lot of them right in downtown Fort Worth. There are several of them here in Frisco, but hey, there's this great big blank spot right here in kind of the South Dallas Grand Prairie area. Um, maybe that's where, that's where I need to put my health food store. If I don't have a, um, if I don't have a storefront yet, I can use that information. Hey, that's really important. That's good information. So that's a pretty basic piece of information that you can learn. Um, what you can also do is consumers and lifestyle database. Um, so this is people, the people in an area. So one thing you should know is this data is not current, not perfectly up to date. It is supposed to update weekly. Um, one thing I found out when I searched myself they still have me living at my parents' house where I haven't lived with my parents for um, 11 years. So it's kind of funny. Um, but one thing you can do, which I think is very impressive, is that you can life science. You can look at somebody's lifestyle, which means, um, so what they do is they take a look at your um, consumer data uh, so like what magazines you subscribe to, what stores you have loyalty cards to, um, things like that. Um, and they can decide, are you a dog lover? Do you like uh, arts and crafts? Are you into fitness? So you are opening your health food store, possibly in Grand Prairie. Um, so you're really interested in health diet and people who are interested in health diet and fitness. Um, and maybe just all of those, you like all of those, those look, those all look good. Um, or maybe you're not interested in people who are interested in exercise because you are selling um, health foods and you're not a gym. I don't know. So let's say you're looking specifically for people who are interested in diet and weight loss. Uh, preferably, once again, sorry, I forgot to put this there, in the metro area, in the DFW metro area. Ooh, I found us. Okay, now I'm gonna update my count. There are 26,000 people here in the DFW metro area. This uh, may not be entirely useful. You can, um, you can shrink your people down. You can shrink your um, searches down way, way um, smaller than that. Um, you can take a look at the heat map again. This is probably gonna come out to be mostly a population map. Um, if I were to guess, just because uh, that was a very general thing that I just looked up. And it's, yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a population map. Um, but right there where we saw that um, big gap, when we were looking at the businesses, there's no health food store kind of in, and this is going to be really slow. Um, th there's no health food store kind of in this area, which we were looking at before, but there appear to be a lot of people who are interested in health and fitness. So you're the person who's needed, right? Um, so those are some really basic things that you can do with reference solutions. Um, one thing I recommend, because they have this available, anybody who has access to reference solution has access to these webinars. They have these four 
regularly repeating webinars. And this entrepreneurship one is excellent. It's going to show you some really good tips and tricks for um, so for searching and um, using reference solutions data for marketing. Um, so that's reference solutions. Reference solutions is really cool, really useful, and really expensive, which means not every library has it. It's another one that's not in every library. Um, Dallas House of Fort Worth has it. Uh, Plano has it. Denton has it. Um, there is a list of DFW libraries that do have it uh, in the uh, slide deck. And I can't remember all of them. If you're outside the DFW area, it's another one of those things that ask your librarian. They will be able to tell you if they have reference solutions. Again, it's sometimes called Reference USA. This last one I'm going to take a quick look at is Business Source Complete, which looks like this. It is not my favorite, um, but it is available in every library in the United States. So it's um, worth taking a look at. Um, again, it has a lot of the same information as uh, reference solutions. It's just more out of date and a little bit harder to read, unfortunately. It's free. Uh, it's not free, but um, so again, say we're looking for health food. Uh, that's this is wanting a company name. Uh, we're looking for a keyword search. I'm looking for health food here in company information. Um, and this is, so obviously this is a, a little bit specific. To, <laughs> all right, this is not very specific to my region, um, but it does give me um, information about um, the market in general. Um, that's going to give me information about how the market is doing. Um, and you can probably, she says, uh, I suspect that you can, yeah, you can sort this. You're gonna be able to sort this by country. And um, so you'll be able to narrow your search to the United States. Again, it's not nearly as um, intuitive as reference solutions, um, but it does provide a lot of um, information. Um, it's just a little harder to get at. Again, this is one, if your library has access to this one um, and you feel like you need the information off of it, I recommend, again, going to your public, going to your library and talking to your librarians and um, asking them for help with it. Uh, it's kind of, as I said before, a little unintuitive. Um, so the last last thing I wanted to talk about is our 3D printers. Um, I'm going to talk about Fort Worth specifically. Um, if your library has 3D printer, you will need to check their policy. But at Fort Worth, um, we have 3D printers in every single one of our branch libraries. And anybody, we do not check your um, Fort Worth library card, anybody can print um, items for free. So if you have a piece of marketing that you want 3D printed, like a keychain or something, um, or you have a prototype that you've designed and want to print, the Fort Worth Library, you can do that at the Fort Worth Library for free. Um, we're not a manufacturing lab. We can't be your entire, um, like, we can't print everything that you're going to sell, but we can print you your first prototype and maybe um, a plate of keychains if that's something that you're doing. Um, but that's kind of, um, it's really exciting. Um, we're really excited about the 3D printers. We're really excited that we can provide them for free. Um, it's, it's something we're pretty excited about here at Fort Worth. Um, so the last thing I wanted to do before I turn over to questions is, hey, Lynn, I'm not at the Fort Worth Public Library. I don't live in Fort Worth. How do I find uh, out what uh, databases my library has? It's a good question person that isn't actually, doesn't actually exist. Um, what you're going to want to do, because most libraries are going to have this on their website, is go to your library's website. Hey, what library are you at? Um, let's say you're at the, the Pflugerville Public Library. 
I may have already uh, done this in practice. So you're in Flu you live in Flukerville and you have a library card at the library here. That's great. Um, this is what their website looks like. It's not 100% clear where you're going to find databases, except it is because you have listened to me talk all night. Um, your best bet is here digital and online resources. Most of these places, most libraries are going to have something like digital resources, online library, learning resources, um, or databases. And that is going to be where you find um, your databases. So Pflugerville has Hoopla, which is a place that you can find books and movies. They have Overdrive, which is where you can find books, and they have TextShare databases. Now, TextShare is very cool. When I told you that there were um, databases that are available at every library in the state of Texas, this is why, because there's a consortium of Texas libraries that have worked together to make these available to all of us, um, and it's excellent. So um, that means that Pflugerville probably doesn't have things like reference solutions. It probably doesn't ha have LinkedIn Learning. Um, you can take a look at these and see if you can find something like LinkedIn Learning. What they do have, okay, so these Gale uh, databases, you get to pick and choose when you join TextShare. Um, and Gale Business Demographics Now, Gale Business Entrepreneurship, and Gale Business Plan Builder are probably what they chose instead of spending the extra money on um, reference solutions, uh, because Demographics Now is going to give you some of the information that Reference Solutions has, um, and Plan Builder is going to give you some of that startup information that uh, LinkedIn Learning had. Um, but they do have LinkedIn Learning as well, which is also awesome. So a lot of libraries are going to, if you um, scroll through them, you're going to find their, uh, you're going to find their databases or their electronic re resources. So look for the words digital library, look for electronic resources, and look for databases. And you're going to find them somewhere. Um, again, always you can walk in or call your local library and say, hey, I want to find, and your friendly neighborhood librarian will help. Um, I think that was everything I wanted to say. Oh, one other thing. Sorry, really, really quick. Um, you don't have a library card. Maybe um, for whatever reason, you don't have a library card. One, you should get one. It's nice to have. Two, that's okay. Um, if you want to use a database at home, you're not going to be able to. But you want to use this database anyway, or you're visiting town and want to use a database that you found out that that town has, that's okay. When you walk into a library and use their internet provider, um, you will have access, you should have access to their databases when you're inside the building using their um, internet. So that's just a little tip um, for future reference. Um, all right, questions. <laughs> So, Lynn, you're going to have all of those uh, databases and stuff inside of the PowerPoint presentation. Is that correct? Yes. So you're going to I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint again. Um, no, that's fine. We just had a lot of people that were asking and I just wanted to put everybody's minds at ease that that would be available inside of your. Yeah, so you'll be able to yeah. go through. This isn't going to take you that there isn't a link here because you have to go through the um, you have to go through the library database and you have to put in your library card number so a link would not be very helpful for you, but this is a way for you to remember which one is which and which one does which things. Um, Perfect. And Darcia it looks like has Darcia has a question yep. Hello, everyone, I was just wondering um, i'm a big tech share fan and. I was learning that most libraries were starting to opt out. And I have I not heard that. So I had um, one all through undergrad. I loved it. I was able to go to SMU, DBU. I was able to go to everywhere with this um, based on me being an undergrad student at Paul Quinn. 
And then um, I think like maybe 2016, I got my new tech share card. I went to Arlington. They said they opted out. And then Irving um, was, it was something wonky going on over there too. So it prevented <coughs> me and hindered me from being able to, you know, go everywhere that I was able to. And then um, I, they were saying that a lot of the colleges were, and this is of course way before COVID. So I don't know if you can talk any more about that. So you're talking about the text share card. So a text yes. share card for everybody interested, a text share card gives you um, borrowing privileges at um, Texas libraries. Um, that is only for physical items. It's not for databases. Um, so I, that's why I didn't talk about it tonight. Sorry. Uh, overstood. Um, so uh, yes, the text share card, um, and I, I have, sorry, you said that people had opted out of text share and I was a little surprised by that. Most of us are in the text share database consortium, but you're right. Some libraries are opting out of the text share cards. They are extremely labor intensive on our circulation staffs. Um, I don't think that means we should opt out of them. I think it's pretty good. It's, it's a really great system. Um, and I've never worked for a library that didn't uh, do text share cards except for one that gave library cards to literally anyone in the state. So they didn't need text share cards because you could already get a library card with them. Um, otherwise, yes, um, I do know why we're doing it. I don't think it's the best excuse in the world, uh, but I do know that that is, that is the case. I, as far as I know, I admittedly don't work a public service desk anymore at Fort Worth, uh, but as far as I know, Fort Worth is still doing text share cards. Um, my last library where I worked at Carrollton Public uh, is also still doing tech share cards. So not everybody is opting out, but I do think you're right that some of the colleges are, again, because it's very labor intensive. And um, I think for college libraries, it's maybe um, a slightly less of a value add for them the way it is for public libraries. Overstood. Thank you so much. You are so knowledgeable about this. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? I know that was really fast. I have a question. Shoot. If I live in Grapevine, can I use my Grapevine card to come to the library card to come to the Fort Worth library and try the 3D printer? Because you I know don't. that, on, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please finish your question. Sorry, I, I interrupted um, you. No, no, uh, because I know that prior to COVID, our library had uh, 3D printing lessons for children, for mm -hmm. teenagers and young adults. And then during COVID, those lessons were suspended and I'm not sure if those lessons are coming back. But either way, they were not geared toward adults. So I was wondering if I could come to the Fort Worth Library and try it out. So you are welcome to come and try out our 3D printers. You don't need a library card anywhere. Um, but yeah, you can definitely come and try them out. We don't currently have, um, we don't currently have a like class in 3D design or 3D printing geared to adults. Um, because I haven't written it yet. I'm the one who's supposed to be writing it, and I've only been with Fort Worth for a couple of months now, uh, working on it, uh, hopefully in the spring. Um, but we do have our printers running. You're welcome to come. And at every library, there is a librarian. Again, talk to your librarians. There is a librarian who is available to talk you through the basics of it and can um, give you some how to use the actual printer. They may not be able to teach you how to design, um, but they should be able to teach you how to take a file that's already created, load it into the printer and get it printed safely. Does that make sense? I think so. Question? It looks like she's frozen, Lynn. So. Oh no, that's too bad. Okay. Um, and then we had one in the chat. Do you know what resources the downtown library in San Antonio has? And I think you can just search, you can get on their library website and see, is that correct? 
Uh, yes, sorry, I, I don't know what's available at uh, San Antonio. It's a relatively large library, so I anticipate they're going to have some of the bigger, um, they may have reference solutions because it's very popular. Um, but I can't guarantee that because I, I didn't check, I don't think to check San Antonio specifically. Yeah, that's, I think if you just get on their website, you'll be able to find out. So do we have any more questions before we do the other half of this? I so Lynn, we're... thank you so much. We appreciate it. And I do have um, the slide deck that we'll be emailing with the replay link. And I'm sure that if you are in the Fort Worth area and need to stop by the library, you can also do that. And when you do that, say hi to Lynn. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, really quick. Some of you had some questions um, about library things in general, not necessarily small business things at libraries. You can send questions like that to my email address, which is here. I didn't, I've forgotten I'm wearing the same shirt that I was wearing when I took this picture, but hi, um, I only have one shirt apparently. So yeah, um, I saw some things about interlibrary loan and stuff. Um, I can answer that kind of question, but this is not the forum for it. Go ahead and send me that question in the email. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Such great information. All right. All right. So we're ready to roll in with our second half. And so Tracy. And we'll make this one um, quicker as well. And so if you will share the screen for me because of all my internet issues today. <laughs> I can't read the Adobe, otherwise I could pull it up and it would have other stuff on there. Can you see it? I got, I can, thank you. Okay. you just. Let me know when the next slide. Okay. All right, everyone. I'll try to get through this um, quickly, uh, but this was a big night and obviously it has a lot of information. So we'll talk about business plans, credit and financing, just the roadmap for your business. Next. Okay. Why is a business plan important? So this is something that all of you are gonna to have to turn in to get the second half of your funding. So a business plan is important for decision-making, uh, communication, uh, analyzing your business. It doesn't matter if your business is one year old, five years old, 10 years old, your business models probably changed over the years. So it is something that is useful for everybody. Um, next. So when is a good time to do it? Well, before you start a business, when you need money, stuff, or people, um, as a regular part of running your business. And then just remember it's an ongoing process, not something that you will just do one time because no matter what we think our business is gonna be like, it changes, something happens. I mean, COVID happened. So, I mean, that was a time where a lot of people really had to look at what they were doing and change it. So it's a good thing to have and go back and look at. Next how to write a business plan. There's really not one way that is correct on this. We do, we do know there's a shorter business model canvas now, but because everyone, most everyone here is newer in their business, we do want a full business plan uh, for this one. Uh, and it can help you focus on assessing key areas of your business and strategy for success. So there are many different parts of a big business plan. Uh, typically, it starts with the executive summary, but that is the thing you do very last. The executive summary summarizes the whole business plan here. So just remember, that's what you do last, because many start out trying to do that summary before they've written the other sections. Uh, the business plan could include company description, 
market analysis, primary and secondary, the organization and management. What is the structure of your business? Are you a sole proprietor, LLC, corporation, C-Corp, S-Corp? What service or product line? What is it that you are offering? Marketing and sales, how you're going to go about it, where you're going to get your customers, funding request. What's it for? They're going to want to know what you're going to want to sp spend that money on. And then your investment in the money, in the business. Uh, financial pro projections. Many people have trouble with this, thinking, I have not started my business yet, so how am I going to know uh, how much money I'm going to make? Those are assumptions, but they are based on real numbers. Maybe you... Let's say, for instance, you had a bakery, you're going to sell one cake for $50, cupcakes, $5. I mean, whatever it is, these are all based on real numbers. And if you just take one piece of what you're selling and then another and another, those are the assumptions you're going to base your projections on. You're also going to want to su supplement your funding request with financial projections. So it's very important. Uh, so you want to take your time on this. And your goal is to convince the reader that your business is stable and will be a financial success. Um, these typically people want for three years. Some people have built theirs out for five years. Um, we're looking for three years on this, but many times the first year people go month by month when they're doing the financials and then use a number, a multiplier for year two and year three. Uh, and then an appendix is another part. If there are other things you want to put in there, um, maybe a lease agreement, um, lease agreement, rental agreement, equipment, purchases, resumes, things like that you could put in there. Okay, next. And all of these are going to be shared. The, you're gonna get the video, this slide deck and the one from before. So we have, and we're gonna put all of you in uh, live plan. This is a service that we provide at no charge to you. Live plan is an online business template that can walk you through most everything um, here. It's very user-friendly. If you would Google business plans, B plans comes up and that is the live plan company. Um, it's very easy to use. And again, we can help you with it as well. You can customize it as well. You can add or remove sections or reorder any material in there the way you want it. Next. They also have a lean business plan part in there as well. Um, and so you could start out with that just to put your ideas down and then work into the full business plan. Next, and excuse me one second. Sorry, I had to cough. <laughs> so I, thought, I thought I'd take it offline. I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay, so now we've gone into, is that the first part on the financing? I guess it was right after that other, okay. One second, Tracy. Okay. Having a little. Yes, uh, there's a question, will the live plan also be available to non-grant recipients? Yes, um, you can sign up or you can send me an email, but the easiest way to do that is to register for small business advising and on there, that way we'll have your information and can set that up and you can put in there that you would like access to the business plan, uh, live plan business plan template, but we do offer that free to everybody. Okay, we're there. Start okay. off. Yes. Okay. 
All right. As you're putting your business plan together, and many of you may have already started your business, but if you haven't yet, it's very important to calculate that before you're before you launch, because many times this costs way more than you think it think it will. So it's always good to know to put those put those numbers and the information down. So preparation is really the key here. Um, and it's great to know what bills you're going to have and what expenses and how much it's going to cost for your business. So your startup costs normally include uh, things such as um, things that are going to start bringing in revenue. For example, many new companies ex incur expensive expenses for legal work, logo design, brochures. Uh, where's your office going to be? Are you working from home? Were there improvements that had to be done even before you opened your door? Startup expenses also can include things, rent and payroll that start before you launch and continue on. And there's also startup assets. So many times this is cash that could be from the bank. It could be money that you put in it. Uh, could be what you have paid for inventory. Um, others might include current or long-term assets, such as equipment, office furniture, vehicles, etc. So cash flow projections um, on here includes many of the most common things. And as you look at this, it, this is like if someone just wanted a standalone template, we give those uh, to people. But again, it includes things like telephone, um, rent, utilities, insurance, bank charges, many things that are recurring month to month. And again, a lot of this you'll find in the life plan, which will make it easy even easier for you to figure to do this. Next. Another important aspect and really one of the most difficult for um, small business owners starting up is getting credit, getting loans, looking for all of that. So this is where it's important before you're gonna get a business loan that you have some idea and know about your credit. Uh, one of the first things they're going to look at, your personal credit is going to matter when you're looking for a business loan or business funding. A better credit report will raise your credit score. The higher the score, the lower the interest rate. And so you want to know there's a lot of places that say they're free credit reports, but they really aren't. So the one from the government that you can get three, uh, one of each of your three credit reports is annualcreditreport.com. But you can also find that some of the credit cards uh, that you have, they have free FICO, st FICO scores on them. So you can check there to have an idea what your credit is. Uh, you can also use Credit Karma. There are other things like that as well that are free. Uh, early on, I worked for a credit bureau and I'm kind of a credit junkie anyway. So it's nice to know this information and where, where, how to go about fixing it if you need to, or, or look at it and just prepare yourself if you're going to get a loan or looking for something, some financing. All right, next. So what you want to do is get your credit report and verify all the information that is on there. This is amazing to me. Independent studies showed over 70% of reports contain errors. So you want to fix or dispute what you, can, what you can. So some of the common errors include false delinquencies, public records, judgment accounts that belong to someone else, and if you have a low credit score, fix what you can, dispute what you can. Um, this is crazy guidance, but uh, if you can't, if, if a creditor cannot give you your, um, a creditor has to reply to you within 30 days or they're gonna have to remove from the credit report what you have. So many suggest disputing and some have said to do this 
uh, in the month of December or around the holidays because those 30 days go past. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, so that could be a time to dispute. Uh, you can make sure they correct it. Uh, you could also settle a debt, but if people settle a debt, you want to make sure if it's a credit company that you do ask them, if we settle, are you removing this from my credit? So you want to make sure, uh, but when you do settle, you will get something um, showing the amount that was, um, that you did not pay uh, the amount, um, can't think of the name of that, but the extra that they wrote off, you will be responsible tax-wise for that. Next. Um, there are other things but on the credit, besides the credit score on there, there could be bankruptcies, foreclosures, short sales. Um, sometimes with a banker or someone, you can give them a letter of explanation. Um, examples that might require that if you had late payments or tax liens, uh, if there are derogatory marks on there or a repossession, if you have charge-offs, medical bills, um, those are all things you can talk about. Student loans and, and child support, uh, those are things that I think can pretty much follow somebody for the rest of their life or almost, so you wanna make sure um, you know about those. In divorce, many times that really wreaks havoc on a family's um, finances, but you may want to write a letter to go along with that to a lender, and many of them take that into consideration when they're looking at if your score is not as good as it could be. So there are low or no credit options to start your business, um, friends and family. Uh, I've also heard this as friends, family, and fools. Um, business cash advance, some have done that. You can consider invoice financing, uh, a micro loan, angel funding, or venture capital, and grants. Okay. If you're asking for funding, this is where you're going to outline your funding requirements. And your goal is to explain to a lender um, how much funding you're going to need over the next five years and what you're going to use it for. And you want to specify whether you want debt or equity, the terms that you want applied, and the length of time your request will cover. So you want to give detailed description of how you're going to use your funds and especially how those funds are going to help your business and increase sales. Next. So there are different types. Borrowing money is one of the most common sources of funding for a small business, but obtaining a loan really is not easy. So before you approach a lender for a loan, you will need to understand the factors the bank will use to evaluate your application. Um, so they're going to look at, obviously, different types of financing. They're going to look at your ability to repay. They're going to look at your credit history. Um, they're going to want to know if you have your own equity investment in the business. Do you have anything as collateral, a building, a vehicle, anything like that? Management experience. Do you know anything about this business that you're going in? So those are some of the questions that your lender will ask. They're going to want to know that you are going to be able to repay this loan. So the ability or capacity uh, must be justified in your loan package. Banks want to want to see two sources of re repayment, cash flow from the business, as well as a secondary, secondary source of collateral. So this is really important and why it's so difficult for people when they start a business to get a loan, because <clears throat> many times your business isn't making any money yet. And so when they see that, it's like, well, how are you going to pay a loan back? So it's a, 
Many don't get loans because they don't have that secondary source uh, of collateral. And sometimes it's great to start your business when you have another job, when you have a job or something that can help pay your bills until your business can support itself. Generally, banks are not comfortable offering assistance to businesses that have been, uh, they're more comfortable uh, with businesses that have been in business for a number of years and have a proven financial track record. If they make a profit and can cover the payment of additional debt, then it's usually not that difficult for them. It's just so hard when businesses are starting up uh, two years is often a magic number because then you've stayed in business, you've made some money, and many of the business, many businesses fail early on. So two years is often a good number when you're going to get a loan from the bank. So there are different types of financing. Equity financing or equity capital is money raised by a company in exchange for a share of ownership in the business. Uh, equity financing allows a business to obtain funds without taking on any debt or without having to repay a specific amount of money at a particular time. Most small or growth stage businesses are limited, use limited equity financing. Equity of comes from investors that could be friends, relatives, employees, customers. And most people are familiar with this who watch Shark Tank. Uh, you can see there that they are taking uh, a part of their business. And the most, one of the most common sources of equity funding comes from venture capitalists. They, these are institutional risk takers and maybe groups of wealthy individuals, government assisted sources or major financial institution. Uh, many specialize in one or a few closely related industries and many of these are into the very high tech businesses. Debt financing is what most people are familiar with is borrowing money that must be repaid over a period of time, usually with interest. It can be either short term with full repayment due in less than a year or long term uh, with payments that will last longer than a year. The lender does not gain an ownership interest in the business and debt obligations are usually limited to repaying the loan with interest. Many times they are secured by some or all of the assets of a company. In addition, lenders commonly require the borrower's personal guarantee in case of default. That ensures that the borrower has a sufficient personal interest at stake in the business. And many times people can also have a third party put a personal guarantee on a loan as well. Next. Commercial loans, again, that's what we are most familiar with. They can be obtained from different sources, banks, savings and loans, credit unions, and SBA guaranteed loans. Uh, state and local governments have many programs that encourage the growth of small business. Again, we're back to family members, friends, former associates are all potential sources, especially when capital requirements are smaller. Traditionally, banks have been the major source of small business funding. And the principal role of banks include short-term loans, seasonal lines of credit, uh, single purpose loans for machinery and equipment, and they've been reluctant to offer long-term loans to small firms. And so that's where the SBA has come in with guaranteed lending programs. Uh, the SBA does not give the money, but they guarantee a portion of the loan. So lenders like that. Next. So non-lender financing is another way. If you have great credit history, no blemishes, uh, some saying 680 or plus credit score, uh, you could do credit card financing, 8 to 10%, invoice financing, uh, known as factoring, 2 to 3% per month, 
collateral-based loan or cash injection, commercial or residential real estate, cars and equipment. Some have even turned their 401k uh, and actually turned funded their LLC or business that way with a self-directed account. Crowdfunding has becoming more and more popular. Uh, it uses small amounts of capital from a large number of individuals to finance a business venture. Uh, it can be used for loans, donations. Typically, those donations have rewards, uh, sales or equity. It works best if you have a great network of supporting people in the community. And crowdfunding has the potential to increase entrepreneurship by expanding your pool of investors from what funds can be raised beyond the traditional source of funding. These are the top 10 crowdfunding uh, platforms, uh, and many are for specific um, uh, areas of business. Uh, some are for high tech, some are for donations, some is for artists. So there are many different types out there. And so if you have any more questions on any of that, um, definitely let us know. I know we went through that quickly and there was a lot of information all over tonight, but again, you will get the slides and, and the video to review as well. So we had a question in the chat, will the live plan of um, live plan also be available for non-grant recipients? Can you talk to that, Tracy? Or I can if you need a break. I know you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. And I did answer that while we were going through that. It's, it's available to anyone. Uh, if you go to our website and register, uh, and for our services, if you want to put that in there, uh, we'll be happy to send it to anyone. We have a large subscription to help as many people as we can. Any more questions? Again, uh, Lynn's PowerPoint, this PowerPoint, and the replay will all be sent out to everybody that's registered, the grant winners, and um, so everybody gets a copy of it. Yes, and thank you guys so much. We know this was a lot of information in a long night. They won't all be this long, um, but we did, of course, want to go by and go through and have everybody introduce themselves too, so we get to know who you are as well and you know who we are and learn more about your business. Um, so if there aren't any more questions, what is it we have next week? Which section? Um, so next week we're doing insurance with Amy Doss. And so it'll be um, next Tuesday, same time. Registration is still open. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, they really, she really goes through all the different types you need to think about uh, with a small business. It's not something we always think about the different types that we may be needing. So everyone th from all of us at the center, thank you uh, or congratulations. We're so excited for all of you and glad you are here. And if there are any questions at any time, please reach out. And I know you all have our, our email by now, everything grant related, we'll just go through CWE grants at TWU.edu. Awesome, have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.